The problem with switch statements, Uncle Bob. Hello, I'm Chris Athanas. I'm a KMP developer. Tech Support said they're coming out Tuesday to close that up. And today I'm going to, I believe them. I really, I really do. Uh, I'm just keeping hope alive. I want to be responding to the problem of switch statements. Easy for me to say with Uncle Bob. Uh, what is the problem with switch statements? Okay, so let's, see what, let's see what the uncle has to say. Why? What's wrong with switch statements? Yeah. What's that? They break. Why do they break? Oh, but you might forget them. Yes. Okay. Good. By the way, Kotlin has this has a has a thing where it has exhaust is it has a exhaustive. It'll give you a warning if you haven't put all the cases in for the if it's called sealed sealed classes. I can't remember. Anyway, they have an exhaustive switch statement, so the, the compiler will actually error out if you don't have them all all the cases. That we, so the language can can solve this. So I guess you're talking about Java. Let's keep going. So switch statements. What goes wrong with switch statements? What they do more than one thing. That's true. So let's say that we've got a switch statement. This switch statement switches on, oh, the type of a shape. So there's a, a shape, and it's, there's an enum somewhere that like, defines circle and square. Sometimes I agree with Rock Obama. I'm not always do dogging on, but some, sometimes he's. Uh, let's keep going. And triangle and so on, traditional kind of, kind of objects. And you've got a switch statement that switches on this shape type. And in fact, how many such switch statements will there be in the system? Because your system deals with shapes. How many such switch statements will there be? Well, you're going to have to have a switch statement when you draw a shape. Are you talking about object class stuff? We're talking about inheritance hierarchies and object-oriented programming stuff instead of switch statements? Okay. Have to have another one Where's it going with this? A shape, and another one when you erase a shape, and another one when you drag a shape, another one when you stretch a shape. In fact, every time you do anything to a shape. Right, you could have classes of the objects in each class, each class of object have its own definition of its implementation instead of having a switch statement. So you put the, all the, you spread the switch statements out, switch statements out into classes or you keep them in the switch format, which is the procedural style. I go into this in my course, how to program from the ground up, all the differences between these two things. I'll try and break them up for you. You'll have to have a switch statement. Now what goes wrong? It's free, by the way. You add a new type of shape. What happens when you add a new type of shape? Gotta go gotta all, you have to go through all the switch statements. Okay, so you're talking about procedural versus object-oriented programming paradigm styles, the way things, ways of thinking. Find all the switch statements. You've got to go through the whole code. You've got to find all the switch statements. Are you going to find them all? Are they all switch statements? They might. Some of them might be if-else statements. True. And then there's this problem. That's the, this is a classic C C programming style. Before we had the classes and objects and things like that. Rotate shape. What do you do in the circle case? Nothing. There's no case for the circle. So the programmer does some nice logical optimizations. Here's the problem now, right? You've got to add a new type of shape, a rhombus. And you've got to find every switch statement in the system. And you've got to investigate every switch statement in the system, logically decoding them to make sure you put the rhombus part in in just the right place. Yeah, this is this is one of the reasons why they came up with classes. And this is fragile. This breaks. It's hard to do. One of a good good use case for classes. It causes lots of difficulties. What's the solution? Polymorphism is the solution. Of course, we don't want to have a switch statement. We want to have a base class called shape, and we want to have subclasses okay. for triangle and circle and square and rectangle and all of these interesting derivatives. And then we can put all of those functions into the derivatives. We can put the draw function and the rotate function and the okay. drag function and the square function. Yeah. All of those functions can go into the derivatives. And now what happens when we add a new shape? What changes in the system when we add a new shape? We have to add a new, a new file, new class, new subclass, yes. But nothing else in the system changes. Right, so it's, it's de you're de decoupling it. Yeah, so you're, de you're, you're but you, I mean, you still have to be aware of how this all puts together. But yeah, you're decoupling it at compile time, not runtime, which you could do this in Java, JavaScript. JavaScript lets you do this at runtime, but in Java and Kotlin, everything has to be done at compile time. Let's keep going. There are no switch statements. The switch statements are all gone. Nothing else in the system changes. This is called the open-close principle. The open-close principle says that a system, a module, should be open for extension but closed for modification. You should be able to extend the behavior of a module without modifying that module. 
And how do you do that? Well, you do that by creating base classes and having derivatives. Our I system mean, can now be extended with new shapes without modifying anything in the system. We have to add something to the system, but we don't have to modify anything. This I mean, you hope not. I mean, sometimes you need to. <laughs> I mean, this, is a, this isn't cut and dry, Bob. It's, it's, for simple cases, yes, but... That's one of the reasons we don't like switch statements. I mean, okay, that's that's object-oriented programming theory. Uh, sometimes it's maybe better with smaller programs to do switch statements, but once you get over a level of complexity, which what is that cutoff? I don't know, five, ten. Then we'll throw out a random number like Bob does. But yeah, there comes a point where it makes more sense to have a bunch of different objects, different classes of objects. So, okay. It was all right, Bob. You did okay on that one, I guess. All right, I'll, I'll let you have that one, Bob. Give me a like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon.